What if every plastic bottle you throw away could be turned into something useful, like the pipes that carry water into your home? Sounds unbelievable, right? But with the world drowning in plastic waste over 300 million tons every year, this idea might just be the game changer we need. Right now, most of the 1 million plastic bottles we buy every minute end up in landfills or the ocean, taking up to 450 years to decompose. As they break down, they create tiny plastic particles that are even showing up in our food and drinking water. This is a crisis that's only getting worse. But what if we could turn this waste into PVC pipes, the kind used in plumbing, construction, and irrigation? This would not only help get rid of the plastic waste piling up everywhere, but also reduce the need to make new PVC pipes from fossil fuels. It's a win-win solution if we can make it work. In this video, we're diving into how this transformation is even possible. We'll look at the science behind it, the problems that need solving, and real footage of factories that are already turning plastic trash into something valuable. Could this idea really help clean up our planet, or is it just making the plastic problem more complicated? Let's find out. Turning plastic bottles into PVC pipes might sound simple, but it's a lot more complicated than just melting down old bottles. First, there's a big difference between the types of plastic used. Most plastic bottles are made from PET, polyethylene terephthalate, while PVC pipes are made from polyvinyl chloride. These two types of plastic have different chemical structures and properties, which makes it challenging to convert one into the other directly. So how can it work? One way is through advanced recycling techniques that break down PET into its basic chemical parts. These parts can then be rebuilt into PVC or other useful materials. Another approach involves blending PET with additives to create a material strong enough to be used for pipes. Researchers and companies are testing different methods to see which one works best on a large scale. This concept not only helps in reducing plastic waste, but also cuts down on the need for new fossil fuels to produce traditional PVC pipes. If successful, it could transform how we think about recycling, turning everyday trash into something that helps build our cities and infrastructure. Another challenge is contamination. Plastic bottles are often mixed with labels, caps, and leftover liquids, making it hard to recycle them purely and efficiently. Even a small amount of contamination can ruin an entire batch of recycled material. Removing these contaminants is time-consuming and expensive, requiring advanced sorting and cleaning processes. If you're into saving the planet or just into watching cool videos about it, hit that subscribe button. It's the most eco-friendly thing you can do in just one second. Cost is another major hurdle. The process of breaking down PT into its basic chemicals and then transforming those into PVC is costly and energy-intensive. Right now, it's often cheaper to produce new PVC directly from fossil fuels than to recycle plastic bottles into pipes. For this idea to work on a large scale, the cost of recycling would need to drop significantly. Environmental impacts also come into play. Recycling plastic involves high temperatures and chemical treatments that can produce harmful emissions if not managed properly. This raises questions about whether recycling PET into PVC pipes is truly a green solution or just a way to shift pollution from landfills to the air. Lastly, there's a lack of infrastructure for advanced recycling. Most recycling facilities are set up to handle simple processes, like melting down single-use plastics into new bottles or containers. Upgrading these facilities to manage the complex process of turning PET into PVC would require significant investment in time. These challenges highlight why this idea, while promising, is still in its early stages. Overcoming them will take a mix of technological breakthroughs, funding, and strong policies that support recycling innovation. In the next section, we'll look at some of the innovative processes being tested to make this transformation possible. Despite the challenges, some innovative recycling processes are showing promise in turning plastic bottles into PVC pipes. One of the most exciting methods is chemical recycling. Unlike traditional recycling, which involves melting plastic down, chemical recycling breaks PT bottles back into their basic chemical building blocks. These chemicals can then be rebuilt into PVC or other durable materials. This process not only helps handle contaminated plastics, but also produces high-quality outputs that are almost as good as new. Another promising approach is pyrolysis, a method that heats plastic waste in the absence of oxygen. This process converts plastic into oil, which can then be processed into PVC and other products. Pyrolysis can handle mixed and dirty plastics that traditional recycling methods struggle with, making it a flexible option for large-scale recycling. 
However, it's still expensive and requires a lot of energy, which raises questions about its environmental impact. Mechanical recycling is also being tested for this transformation. By using additives and stabilizers, researchers have found ways to blend PET and PVC to create a new material that can handle the pressure and durability requirements of pipes. This method is less expensive than chemical recycling, but is still in the experimental phase and needs more testing before it can be used on a large scale. There are also real-world examples of these technologies in action. For instance, a company in India is using chemical recycling to turn plastic bottles into construction materials, including pipes. In Europe, a few pilot projects are testing the feasibility of using pyrolysis oil to produce PVC products. These projects are not just experiments. They are proving that this concept can work with the right investment and technology. The key to making these processes viable is scale and cost. Right now, these technologies are expensive and limited to small-scale projects. To make a real impact on plastic pollution, they need to be scaled up with the help of government support, funding, and consumer demand for recycled products. While turning plastic bottles into PVC pipes is an exciting idea, it's not the only way to tackle the plastic waste crisis. Some experts argue that we should focus more on reducing plastic use and promoting biodegradable alternatives instead. For example, companies are developing plant-based plastics that can break down much faster than traditional plastics. These materials could help cut down the amount of waste that ends up in landfills and oceans. Another promising solution is chemical upcycling, which takes low-value plastic waste and converts it into high-value products like jet fuel, stronger plastics, or even building materials. Unlike traditional recycling, which often leads to lower quality products, upcycling creates materials that can replace newly produced ones. This approach could help make recycling more profitable and sustainable. Improving waste management systems is also crucial. In many parts of the world, plastic waste isn't collected or processed properly. Investing in better collection, sorting, and recycling facilities could dramatically reduce the amount of plastic that ends up in the environment. In the end, solving the plastic problem might require a mix of solutions, including reducing, reusing, recycling, and developing alternatives. The idea of turning plastic bottles into PVC pipes offers an exciting glimpse into what the future of recycling could look like. By transforming waste into something useful, we could tackle two major problems at once, reducing plastic pollution and cutting down on the need for new fossil fuels. However, as we've seen, this solution comes with serious challenges. The costs, the technical difficulties, and the environmental impacts of these advanced recycling processes can't be ignored. But there's also a lot of potential. As technology improves and the cost of recycling comes down, turning plastic bottles into PVC pipes could become a key part of a broader strategy to manage plastic waste. It might not be the perfect solution, but combined with other approaches like reducing plastic use, promoting biodegradable alternatives, and investing in better waste management. It could help make a real difference. The big question now is, will governments, businesses, and consumers support these innovations and help bring them to scale? Solving the plastic crisis will take a lot more than one solution. It will take a global effort. In the end, the future of recycling might depend less on finding a perfect fix and more on our willingness to invest in all the promising ideas on the table.